Welcome back, jungle explorers. I hope you're ready for another week trekking the unknown, going on an adventure as we go through Lead the Way. Now that we're all back together again, our exodus expedition can continue. Now, last time we talked about, like I said, the burning bush, and then, well, first we started with Moses in the basket, and then the burning bush, and then Moses had to return to Egypt, and he had a very important message for the Pharaoh, which was the king of Egypt, and it was to let God's people go. Now, the king didn't like the um, Israelites, the Hebrew people, and uh, he kind of was extremely horrible, nasty, terrible to them. Do you think he's just going to let them leave? It's, it's almost like we could read the answer right here in Exodus. We're going to the beginning of our Bibles, and we're going to Exodus chapter 7. So here goes Moses, and he has a brother along with him named Aaron, and he's going to go to Pharaoh, and God has some messages, some things to tell Moses before he goes. So, <clears throat> tell Aaron everything I command you, and Aaron must command Pharaoh to let the people of Israel leave his country. But I will make Pharaoh's heart stubborn so I can multiply my miraculous signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Even then, Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you, so I will bring down my fist on Egypt. Then I will rescue my forces, my people, the Israelites, from the land of Egypt with great acts of judgment. And when I raise my powerful hand and bring out the Israelites, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Okay, so Moses and Aaron now have to go to Pharaoh and say, let my people go. Ready? So Moses and Aaron went to the Pharaoh and they did what the Lord commanded them. And Aaron threw down his staff, which was like a big stick before Pharaoh and his officials. And it turned into a serpent, which is like a snake. I love this part. Well, not the snake part, but the fact that God's in control. Then Pharaoh called in his own wise men and his sorcerers, and these Egyptian magicians did the same thing with their magic. They threw down their staffs and they became serpents. But when Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs, Pharaoh, the, oh, I'm sorry. But then Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Pharaoh's heart, however, remained hardened. He still refused to listen, but just as the Lord had predicted. Now we know that God knew this was going to happen because he needed to multiply his miracles. He needed to show, he didn't need to show, he, he was already God. He was here to show the Egyptians can't mess with God's people. So, a plague of blood. <laughs> Spooky. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn and he still refuses to let my people go. 
So go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes down to the river. Stand on the bank of the Nile, which is the big giant river in Egypt. Meet him there and be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has sent me to tell you, let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now, you have refused to listen to him. So this is what the Lord says. I will show you that I am the Lord. Look, I will strike the water of the Nile with this staff in my hand and the river will turn to blood. The fish in it will die. The river will stink. And the Egyptians will not be able to drink any water from the Nile. So the Lord tells Moses that Aaron needs to, guess what? Take up his staff, raise his hand over the waters, and watch out. Yeah, the first awful happening has now happened, also known as a plague. And this is when the waters turn to blood. Now, I know we read about the Nile turning, but every ounce of water in Egypt and the bowls and the jars and the puddles and everything turned to blood. Can you imagine if the only thing you had to drink was blood? Blech. So, pretty horrible, terrible thing happening. Let's see how Pharaoh responds. <clears throat> Pharaoh's heart remained hardened. He refused to listen to Moses and Aaron just as the Lord had predicted. And Pharaoh returned to the palace and he put the whole thing out of his mind. Then all the Egyptians dug along the riverbank to find new drinking water for they couldn't drink from the Nile. And seven days passed. <clears throat> Chapter eight, a plague of frogs. Yeah, the next awful happening is happening. The Lord said to Moses, go back to Pharaoh and announce to him, this is what the Lord says, let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. If you refuse to let them go, I will send a plague of frogs across your entire land. Guess what? Frogs. Just everywhere. Think about, just, just, <laughs> I can't even describe it. Everywhere, in food barrels, contaminating them, in the water jugs, in your bed, in your home, outside, inside, everywhere. Blech. And Chapter eight, verse eight says, then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and he begged them, plead with the Lord to take the frogs away from me and my people. I will let your people go so they can offer sacrifices to the Lord. You set the time, Moses said, tell me when you want me to pray for you, your officials and your people, then you and your houses, they'll be rid of these frogs. They will only remain in the Nile. Do it tomorrow, Pharaoh said. All right, it will be as you've said, Moses replied. Then you will know that there is no one like our God. The frogs will leave you in your houses, your officials, and your people. They will only remain in the Nile. Moses cried out to the Lord about the, about the frogs he had inflicted on Pharaoh. And the Lord did just as Moses replied. He took away the frogs from the houses, the courtyards, and the fields. And they piled, into, they piled the frogs, <laughs> the Egyptians, into these big heaps. But when Pharaoh saw that, you know, he had a little, he had a little break from terrible frogs, he became stubborn and he refused to listen to Moses and Aaron, just as the Lord had predicted. So blood, frogs. <clears throat> Do you think it's the end? No, of course not. God said that his heart would be hard and he would need to show a multitude of miracles. So after that, all the dust in the air is going to turn into gnats. Here we go. So the Lord said to Moses, tell Aaron, raise up your staff and strike the ground. The dust will turn into swarms of gnats throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses and Aaron did just that, and they were everywhere. And think about dust, it's so tiny, and we breathe it in all day long when it's shaken from things, and I cannot even imagine how disgusting it was, and just filled with everywhere. The gnats covered everyone, people and animals alike, and this is the finger of God, the magicians exclaimed to Pharaoh. But Pharaoh's heart remained hardened. Plague three, and Pharaoh's like, nah, I think we'll be okay. I think we'll survive it. He was not, he was not thinking clearly. Blood, frogs, gnats. Nope. So here comes next. If you thought the gnats were bad, here's the, another gross one. Flies. And the Lord told Moses, get up early in the morning and stand in Pharaoh's way as he goes down to the river and say to him, this is what the Lord says. Let my people go so they can worship me. And if you refuse, I will send swarms of flies on you, your officials, your people, and all of your houses. The Egyptians' home will be filled with flies and the ground will be covered with them. 
but this time I will spare the region of Goshen where my people live. No flies will be found there. Then you will know that I am the Lord and I am present even in the heart of your own land. I will make a clear distinction between my people and your people. This miraculous sign will happen tomorrow. And the Lord did just as he said. And there were flies everywhere except on God's people, the Israelites. <clears throat> so um, Pharaoh then called in for Moses and Aaron. He said, fine, fine. You can offer sacrifices to your God, but do it right here in this land. Did he really think he needed to try and bargain? No, he needs to obey God. And let's see what Moses says. Moses replied, that wouldn't be right. The Egyptians detest the sacrifices that we offer to the Lord our God. Look, if we offer the sacrifices here and the Egyptians see us, they will stone us, which is essentially killing them. We must take a three-day trip into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, just as he commands us. Fine, Pharaoh said, go ahead. I'll let you go to the wilderness to offer your sacrifices to the Lord, but don't go too far away. Now hurry up and go pray for me. Pharaoh just wanted mercy on himself. Moses answered, as soon as I leave you, I will pray to the Lord. And tomorrow the swarms of flies will disappear from you and your officials and all of your people. But I'm warning you, Pharaoh, don't lie to us again and refuse to let the people go sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses then left Pharaoh's palace and he pleaded with the Lord to remove the flies. And the Lord did as Moses asked and he caused the swarms of flies to disappear from Pharaoh and his officials and not a single fly remained. But Pharaoh again became stubborn and refused to let the people go. Well, I'm getting frustrated. I can't imagine how Moses and Aaron are feeling. So we had blood in the water, frogs covering the land, gnats from the dust, now we have flies covered everything. Are we done yet? No. A plague against the livestock. Go back to Pharaoh, the Lord commanded Moses. Tell him this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews says, let my people go so they can worship me. Um, we're done. So something super bad is now going to happen to the animals. But the Lord is a little, um, he's a, adding a little bit distinction here. Remember, he said there's a separate between my people and your people, Pharaoh. And he said, the Lord will again make the distinction between the livestock of the Israelites and the Egyptians. Not a single one of Israel's animals will die. And Israel did not lose a single animal. But even so, Pharaoh's heart remained hardened and he still did not let God's people go. <sighs> Blood in the water. Frogs across the land, swarms of gnats, swarms of flies. Now we have animals. Do you think it's over? Is it? Do you, do you think we're close? No. Okay, the next one. Okay, the next one is super gross. Okay, so they're called boils and they were festering blisters on people's skin. Okay, just painful sores all over the body. Guess what? Pharaoh's heart remained hardened, and Pharaoh refused to listen. Blood in the water, plague of frogs, swarms of gnats, swarms of flies, livestock is dying, boils on the people. Guess what? We're still not done. Then the Lord said to Moses, get up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and tell him, this is what the Lord, the God of Hebrews says, let my people go so they may worship me. If you don't, I will send more plagues to you and your officials and your people. Then you will know that there is no one like me in all the earth. But now I could have lifted my hand and struck you and your people with a plague to wipe you off the face of this earth. But I have spared you for this purpose, to show you my power and to spread my fame throughout the earth. But you still lord it over my people and you refuse to let them go? So tomorrow at this time, I will send a hailstorm more devastating than any in all the history of Egypt. Quick, order your livestock and your servants to come in from the fields to find shelter. Any person left outside or any animal left outside will die when the hail falls. And some of the officials were actually scared because of what the Lord said. They quickly brought in their servants and their livestock and nothing was left in the open fields. But then the Lord said to Moses, <clears throat> lift up your hands towards the sky so that hail may fall on 
the people and the livestock and the plants throughout the land of Egypt. So Moses did. He lifted his staff to the sky and the Lord sent thunder and hail and lightning flashed through the earth. And the Lord sent a tremendous hailstorm against all the people of Egypt. The only place without hail was, of course, the region of Gashon where the people of Israel lived. Then Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and he said, I have sinned. He confessed, the Lord is the righteous one and my people and I are wrong. Please beg the Lord to end this terrifying thunder and hail. We've had enough. I will let you go. You don't need to stay any longer. All right, Moses replied, as soon as I leave this city, I will lift my hands and pray to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail will stop. And you will know that the earth belongs to the Lord. But I know that you and your officials still, still do not fear the Lord God. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and they went out of the city. And when he lifted his hands to the Lord, the thunder and hail stopped and the downpour ceased. But when Pharaoh saw that the thunder and the rain and the hail stopped, he and officials sinned again. And Pharaoh again became stubborn because his heart was hard. Pharaoh refused to let the people leave, just as the Lord predicted through Moses. Blood in the Nile, frogs everywhere, swarms of gnats, swarms of flies, livestock is dying, boils across the people, hailstorms that have ruined animals, servants, homes, and crops, and we're not even done. A plague of locusts, and here come more bugs. What? There were so many of them, you couldn't even see the ground. They just covered it and they went around and they ate everything. Even the things that they had stored up and were safely away inside buildings, eaten, eaten. So Moses and Aaron were brought back to the Pharaoh. All right, he told them, go and worship the Lord your God. But who exactly is going with you? Pharaoh again is trying to, to play them, to manage all this. Moses replied, we will all go. The young, the old, all sons, all daughters, and our flocks and our herds, we must all join together in celebrating the festival of the Lord. How do you think, you know, Pharaoh's going to feel about this? Pharaoh retorted, the Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plan. Never. Only the men may go and worship the Lord since that is what you requested. And Pharaoh threw them out of the palace. Then the Lord said to Moses, raise your hand over the land of Egypt to bring on the locusts. Let them cover the land and devour every plant that survived the hailstorm. So Moses did. And guess what? Those locusts, ugh, they came in and swarmed and covered the entire land. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron, and I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Forgive me of my sin. Just this once plead with the Lord on my behalf. Except it wasn't just this once, was it? Every single time. I know God was in control. I'm getting a little frustrated with Pharaoh here. Moses must have really had God's leadership on his side to continually deal with Pharaoh. The Lord responded by shifting the wind and this westward wind blew all the locusts into the Red Sea. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again, so he refused to let the people go. Lift your hand toward heaven, the Lord said, and the land of Egypt will be covered in a darkness so thick you can feel it. I just, that's, it feels creepy to me. Can you imagine? Finally, Pharaoh called to Moses, go and worship the Lord. Believe your flocks and your herds here. You may even take your children with you. No, Moses said. You must provide us with animal sacrifices and your burnt offerings to the Lord our God. All of our livestock must go with us too. Not a hoof can be left behind. We must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from these animals. And we won't know we are to worship the Lord until we, we don't know how we're supposed to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again, once more, and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted at Moses. I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied. I will never see your face again. 
nine deadly and honestly disgusting. Do you remember all those bugs, plagues, and still Pharaoh would not let God's people go. It was part of that plan. So then it was time for the 10th and final plague. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will strike Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with one more blow. After this, the Pharaoh will let you leave this country. In fact, he will be so eager to get rid of you, he will force you all to leave. Tell all of the Israelite men and women to ask their Egyptian neighbors for articles of pieces of silver and gold. Now, you know, because the Lord had all had done all these things, the Egyptians were kind of looking favorably upon the Israelites. You know, their God was pretty awesome and, you know, the only real God. So Moses was considered a very great man in the land of Egypt and he was respected. He was respected by Pharaoh's officials and the Egyptian people alike. So Moses had announced to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says at midnight tonight. <clears throat> I will pass through the heart of Egypt and all the firstborn sons in every family in Egypt, from the oldest son of the Pharaoh who sits on the throne to the oldest son of the lowest servant girl who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all of the livestock will die. Then a loud wail. A wail like no one has ever heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful. Not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord has made a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. And all of the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. Please leave, they will beg. Hurry and take all of your followers with you. Only then will I go? Then burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Now the Lord had told Moses earlier, Pharaoh will not listen to you, but then I will do even more mighty miracles in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron performed these miracles in the Pharaoh's presence, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not let the Israelites leave the country. Do you think it's the end? No, we now have to know what we are going to call Passover, where God is going to protect the Israelites from this 10th and final plague. And we read in verse 7, <clears throat> they are, the Israelites, to take some of the blood from this young sacrifice and smear it on the tops and the edges of their door frames where they are going to eat that animal. <clears throat> and then on the night, God says, I will pass through the heart of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son, firstborn male and any animal in the land of Egypt. And I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt for I am the Lord. But the blood on your doorposts will serve as a sign, marking the houses where you are staying. And when I see that blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. Pharaoh brought disaster to his people and to himself, and God showed his power and his might. And the Israelites who obeyed God's command and they spread that blood over their doorposts and followed the instructions, they were spared from that final plague. And that's why even to this day, Passover is celebrated to remember the time of that death passed over the homes of God's people. Now, guess what? <clears throat> we read about 10 different plagues in Exodus and they just happened and happened and happened and happened. And Moses and Aaron were given instructions each and every time. And they went to Pharaoh and they told him exactly what God said. And we're going to learn that we can follow God's lead because Aaron and Moses did an amazing job. They spoke the words that God had given them. They stood up in front of Pharaoh and said, let God's people go. And even though they knew that Pharaoh's heart was going to be hardened, that it wasn't going to work until that very last moment where God allowed it to happen, they still followed God's lead. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close? Heavenly Father, thank you for showing us that no matter what is happening in our lives, we can trust and follow you. If we need to stand up in hard times, if we need to boldly proclaim that you are God, Thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. Thank you for the reminders from Moses and Aaron, Lord, that we can follow your lead. Help us to be strong and courageous, to be bold in our faith, and to be still and know that you are God. 
Help us to stand in the gap, Heavenly Father, that we can bring your light to this world, that we can shine brightly like a city on a hilltop, Lord. Thank you for this time of worship. I thank you for these kids and their families, Lord. I thank you that we can come together and have a wonderful time and learn such beautiful things from you. Thank you for the reminder of your promises that you keep them. I pray for our church family. I ask that you uplift us, bring us closer together, and help us to listen for your voice, that we may follow your lead. In your holy and precious name I pray, amen. Okay, my dears, you thank you so much for watching today. We are continuing our story because guess what? After 10 plagues, what's going to happen? Don't read ahead. Don't spoil it. Okay, fine. You can spoil it if you want to. Keep reading in Exodus at home, and we're going to continue our follow the lead. And, you know, ask your parents how many plagues there were. See if they can identify each one of those animals and insects that came up. I mean, I guess maybe not so much animals, but those bugs, how many bugs could there possibly be? Too many bugs for me. You guys have a great week. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.